Good morning, good morning. It's wonderful to see you all this morning. We almost have a full band this morning. How about a praise the Lord for that, huh? Will you stand as we begin our worship today? sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king you've done for me. Saturday was silent, surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. 
This is the praise we could dead men walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm going to live, going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecost of fire, stirring something new. You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. And I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now. I'm laying
This time we may be seated. We're going to continue our hymn series this week. Blessed Assurance. <coughs> Help me sing it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my stone. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst at my side. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. If you have a small group, um, if you're part of a small group, 630, if you're not part of a small group, come and we will connect you. We have all ages. There's children's activities. There's youth. There's a women's Bible study. There's an adult Bible study. 
It's a great pick-me-up in the middle of the week. So Wednesdays at 6.30. Our meals will not start back just yet. After we get over Labor Day and in September, then we will go back to midweek meals. So yes on small groups at 6.30, no on meals. What have you students had a great week? Was it back to school week? Raise your hand if you went back to school this week. Raise your hand if it was really, really good. I, it's looking good. I got even better than that for you. Pastor Jeremy has a phenomenal morning planned for you. So students, Pastor Jeremy is looking for some friends. If you would like to go to children's church, it is that time. Whoa. I have a not-so-happy announcement. Um, yes to children's church. Yes to small groups. Also, there are still, I think, some spots for women's retreat, right, Sandra? So if you would like to go to women's retreat, um, that is, information is in your bulletin. You can register online. This is a great, great weekend. It's a Friday night and then a Saturday, and this is a really good event. So girls, you should check that out and see if you would, if you would like to come. Um, Zach and Shelby, come up here so that you can be scolded. Pastor Mark's going to do this as well, but I feel like, I just feel like you guys need to do this as well. You know those times where it's like a happy time and a sad time, you know? If any of you took your child to college this week, you know what that's like. You know, it's kind of happy and then it's sad, it's happy and then it's sad. Let me see everyone's sad face. Okay. We are excited, but we're also sad. Zach and Shelby have been scooped up by another church. And we're not going to be bitter about it. We're going to be excited because they're going to have a good opportunity. But Zach and Shelby, this will be their last Sunday with us. And they are going to go to Watonga and serve on staff at Watonga. So we really are happy for this opportunity for them as much as we're going to miss them. So I think they probably get Sundays off every now and then. So we're going to, like, call the pastor and say, hey, could you send us, you know, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Zach and Shelby right over. So um, could you guys just give them a round of applause and let them know how much we love and appreciate them? Thank you, guys. Have you learned to trust him? It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Did you enjoy the Bobsy twins? <laughs> Good. Good morning to everybody in worship, too, and hello to folks watching online. Glad to all be together today. I've got a, before I start, I've got some sad and happy news. The happy news um, is that Zach and Shelby Hunsaker, uh, have been hired by our sister church in Watonga to serve as their youth pastor. That's, that's happy for them, but it's sad news for us because they got to leave Edmund first, and um, they have been a blessing to us, and I, th I believe they're over there in worship too, uh, worshiping there, but it's been a great joy uh, for, for all of us, especially the staff, to be able to mentor this young couple and come alongside them, and we as a church, if uh, the church board have, has given both of them a local minister's license. And, uh, you know, I could, I could stand up here and get bitter about this, and I, I did. I kind of prayed about it and, you know, just fussy with the Lord. And, and the Lord reminded me that I'm not about church building. We're about kingdom building. And uh, so that's, that's we've always kind of been a sending church, and we send them with our blessings today. Amen? Amen. Amen. My prayer is that, you know, when after... Shelby gets her education done, and, and uh, Zach gets the course of studies done. They'll get unhappy at Watonga, and they'll come home. So. <laughs> Our series uh, this summer, Then Sings My Soul, we've been in these uh, series of messages looking at the stories of some of the great hymns, some of our favorite hymns. We've, we've been uh, looking at the story of the song, the story of the, uh, and the life of the writer, how, how the song relates to our relationship with Christ. Uh, next Sunday, if you're looking forward to it, the ne next Sunday the hymn will be Day by Day. Uh, the author of today's uh, hymn is Francis Jane Crosby. I, I could talk all day long about Fanny Crosby, and I probably will spend a lot more time talking about her story than I have any of the other hymn writers 
Not only because her songs are so inspirational, but for me, her life is inspirational. It's a remarkable life. Uh, and um, actually, her songs have meant so much to our family. Uh, before Stan, our brother, passed away, uh, our brothers, we were, we were in the studio working on a project. We didn't really know what to call it, but it was all the songs of Fanny Crosby that we loved the most. And we had set it up, our, our idea about the, the project, and we had recorded a, a lot of things in the studio, so we have a lot of stuff on hand. Uh, and then Stan passed away. We never finished the project, but we, we kind of, our hope was to have a, a, a CD that you could pop in, you know, as you're driving to work. And we had, we were reading scriptures before the songs that set up the song, and uh, we were hopeful that it would kind of be a, an inspirational, devotional kind of a, a project for people on their way to work. Never got done, and uh, my brother Terry, I'm sure you're out fishing today. Put the fishing pole down and th think about, let's go back to the studio and finish that. We'll get, we'll, uh, we'll get our adopted brother, Joe Hall, to help us finish it. Uh, but uh, due to an eye infection, did, you, did, did we say, show a picture of Fanny? Did we show? Okay. Yeah. Uh, due to an eye infection, Fanny Crosby totally lost her eyesight at six weeks of age. But despite her, her blindness, uh, her ability to write songs was um, magnificent. Uh, in fact, she started writing songs at the age of six. <laughs> I'm not sure I could even read at the age of six, uh, let alone, I, could, I think I could write my name at six. But I want you to, uh, there's a poem I came across and I read it to Mary and we both cried. Uh, she wrote this poem when she was nine years old. Now, Think, put this in perspective. For, let me put this in perspective for me. Last year, um, last summer, as if you remember, <laughs> I was blind for eight days. I, I knew, I knew that I, I had a sense that if everything went well, I would get my vision back. But for eight days, and I'm a grown man, I got to tell you, it was one of one of the most frightening day, times of my life. But I want you to hear the depth of this nine-year-old blind girl as she writes this poem. Are you sitting down? <laughs> oh, what a happy soul am I. <laughs> Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. Let that sink in. <laughs> to weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. She went on to write 8,000 or more hymns, uh, gospel songs. Dr. Andy Schooneman uh, told me, and, and by the way, I just want to say publicly to all the, the great retired elders we have in the congregation, I'm so glad that you're part of the, the family of faith here at Edmund First. Thank you for the encouragement that you bring to me. Thank you for helping me craft sermons and, re and resource me and, and do research for me. You, you, you help me to be a better preacher. And, but uh, Dr. Schooneman, Randy, Randy sent a text to me this past week about, about Fanny Crosby. She had written so many songs that publishing companies began to reject them because they didn't want their hymnal full of the same author. <laughs> And so she started uh, using, to get around that, she started using uh, pseudonyms. <laughs> it's a common practice in, in, in when, when you're a prolific writer. But so sh what she would do, was she would formulate the song in her mind and then dictate it to a friend or uh, hire a, a, an amanuensis. Uh, you know, back in Baileysville, West Virginia, we hardly ever hired an amanuensis. And some of you are going to have to Google that word. I'm just showing off today, I know. But uh, one, of her, one of her best friends was Phoebe Knapp, who wrote the music to Blessed Assurance. Uh, Fanny and, and, and uh, Phoebe were total opposites. Fanny lived in the Manhattan slums and worked in the rescue missions. Phoebe was the wife, uh, I believe, of the founder of Metropolitan Life, very wealthy. They lived in a Brooklyn mansion. Nonetheless, they had this close relationship, and, and Fanny was a frequent house guest at the Knapp Mansion. One day, uh, Phoebe had uh, 
composed a tune that she wanted Fanny to hear. And so they went into the, to the music room, and Phoebe sat down at the piano bench and, and played just a few bars, just a few opening lines uh, of this song that we, we know today as Blessed Assurance. So she plays this little bar, and then she asks Fanny, what does the music say to you? <laughs> and Fanny immediately clapped her hands and exclaimed, it's Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. <laughs> and now we have the story. Now, I could have gone in a hundred different directions with this message today. But here's where I believe the Spirit is leading your pastor. I want to make sure that when we say the final amen this morning, that every one of you will have blessed assurance. That you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your sins are forgiven and that heaven will be your eternal home. That's what I feel the Spirit leading me to. So I want to take you to Calvary's Hill in the Gospels and, and listen, in Luke's Gospel in particular. I want us to listen in on a conversation that Jesus has with a criminal that's being crucified alongside him. You know that Jesus was crucified be, between two criminals. One of them rejected Jesus, but the other, we know, accepted Jesus. And he died with that blessed assurance that Fanny Crosby wrote about. It's, it's an extremely important text of Scripture because it tells us exactly what we must do to be saved. It tells us how we can be certain that when we die, that heaven is our eternal home. Luke 23, beginning with verse 39. One of the criminals hanging beside Jesus scoffed, so you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too, while you're at it. <laughs> but the other criminal protested, Don't you fear God, even when you've been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now from this conversation on the cross, we see a few things that we need to know to have this blessed assurance that Jesus is mine, that when we die, we'll go to paradise. The first thing we need to know and understand is that when we die, we're going to face God. You need to know that. One of these days, uh, you're going to die, I'm going to die, and we're going to be standing in the presence of God. Now, the first criminal ridicules Jesus, so you're the Messiah, prove it. Save yourself. Save us too. But the other criminal rebukes him and says, don't you fear God when you've even been sentenced to die? What's he saying? In essence, he's saying, don't you realize the seriousness of this situation? Man, you are about to meet your maker. You are minutes away from eternity. Look at this verse in Hebrews 9, 27. It says that everyone must die. I Googled this. Did you know that the mortality rate in the world is now 100%? Look it up. Everyone must die once. And after that, you don't come back as a dog. You don't come back as a cat or a cow. And after that, be judged by God. Now, wouldn't it be, if you, if you know this, and we do, wouldn't it be foolish to spend your entire life unprepared for something that is so inevitable? And so I want to ask you point blank. If you died today, and it could happen, I don't mean to sound like a pessimist or an alarmist. I'm just telling you the gospel truth today. And I ask you, if you died today, would you go to paradise like this criminal? The second thing we need to know is that our sin deserves punishment. Our sin, to, the criminal said, we deserve to die. He got it. We deserve to die for our crimes. He's admitting that what he did was wrong and that he deserved to be punished. The truth is, we all deserve to be punished for our sins. Romans 6, 23 says, 
for the wages of sin is death, but the gift, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know the difference between a wage and a gift, right? Uh, just to make sure, let's say, let's say your boss comes to you on payday, and, he, and he's got an envelope in his hand, and he says, Oh, have I got a gift to you. You are going to love the contents of this envelope. You, oh man, this, this is a gift that, well, you, you can just thank me later for it. And he hands it to you, and you open it up, and it's your paycheck. Is that a gift? Hello? <laughs> it's a wage. You have, you're thinking, I don't think so. This is no gift. I deserve this. I put in at least 40 hours of my life, my blood, sweat, and tears. I deserve this. <laughs> this is no gift. It's a wage. A gift is something that we don't deserve. Our sin earned the wage of death. <laughs> but God's gift, God's gift is eternal life. Say amen, church. Amen. We don't deserve it, but it's his gift because he loved us. The third thing we need to know is that Jesus is our sinless Savior. He is the sinless Savior. The criminal, who I'm sure did not have a the theology degree, says, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Speaking of Jesus, <laughs> this man hasn't done anything wrong. Question, has anybody said that about you? <laughs> Husbands and wives don't look at each other. I don't make any eye, eye contact. Nobody's ever said that about me. I've had a lot of people love me and care about me and believe in me, but nobody's ever said <laughs> that Mark, he is a perfect man. <laughs> it can't be said about any human being because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark. So when this criminal says he's never done anything wrong, what's he doing? He's recognizing that Jesus is no mere man. Yes, he's in human flesh, but he's God. He got it. Look at, look at the good news of 2 Corinthians 5.21. God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong. Jesus never did anything wrong. Why? so that we could be put right with God. <laughs> Praise his name. That's quite an exchange. That's saving grace is what it is. Jesus, who knew no sin, who never did anything wrong, takes on everything that we've ever done wrong, all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness, so that you and I might be atoned and stand before God Almighty, clean and righteous before him. This brings me to the fourth thing we need to know. We are saved only by the grace of God. It's God's grace that saves us. We see this in what the criminal says next. He says, Jesus, remember me. That's all he says. Jesus, remember me. He knew that there was nothing that he could do to earn God's favor. He's on a cross. He's near death. Who, Brother Harold, he can't even join the church. Wow, man, does he still get to go to heaven? <laughs> uh, he can't be baptized. Does he still get to go to paradise? He, he can't even come to work day. I mean, that's really how you get to heaven in the church of the Nazarene if you show up for work day, right? <laughs> I just had a story. I'm going to block it out and we'll leave it alone, all right? He, he couldn't even come and put any tithes or offerings in the plate. And he still gets to go to paradise. <laughs> Listen, that's why Christ died. Because we couldn't redeem ourselves. There's no goodness. There's no works. There's, you could never be good enough. You could never give enough to earn God's favor. It's only by his grace that we are saved. Get it? Got it. <laughs> this guy doesn't have any of... You know, the terms that we use in our articles of faith. He doesn't know the word justification. <laughs> he doesn't use the word redemption. He doesn't know about atonement or propitiation. He doesn't even know Stan Toller's ABCs of salvation. <laughs> he just says, 
remember me. Remember me. The sinner's prayer here may not have satisfied the theologians, but it satisfied Jesus. <laughs> and if it satisfies Jesus, that's good enough. Remember me. Here's the point I want to make. It's not the words that you say that matter. It's the direction of your heart. It's the direction of your heart. If you have a humble heart and, and your direction is toward God, you will be saved. There's no need to complicate the gospel this morning. <laughs> we don't need to mess up the good news by tacking on some additional requirements and conditions that Jesus never required. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says it best. God saved you by his grace. When you believed, and you can't take credit for this, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that no one of us can boast about it. One more thing. Jesus will save you if you ask him. He'll save you if you ask him. When the criminal asked, Jesus, will you remember me? What did Jesus say? I assure you. <laughs> That's blessed assurance. I assure you today, you will be with me in paradise. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That is the promise of God. It's not a feeling. It's not a hunch. It's not an intuition. It's a no-so. It's a blessed assurance. And I, I want us to look at those words of Jesus a little, little more closely because in, in those words, we see four things about salvation. First of all, salvation is immediate. Jesus says, today, <laughs> today you will be with me in parallel. Not next week, not next month, not a year from now, not a thousand years from today. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Second, salvation is certain. You will. Today, you will be with me. That's certain. You will, not you might. There's no doubt about it. It's assured. And third, salvation we know is a relationship. Jesus says, today you will be with me. With me. You see, salvation is not a ritual. It's all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And finally, it's eternal. Today you will be with me. Where? In, in paradise. You might ask, when can we be saved? Well, the next verse says it all. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 tells us this is the hour to receive God's favor. Today is the day to be saved. Not next week. Not when the kids are grown. Not when you retire. <laughs> not when you're on your deathbed. Today, today is the day to be saved. Remember, there are two thieves on the crosses that day and there were two responses one of them insults Jesus but the other accepts Jesus God gives us that right we are free moral agents you can choose today but <laughs> if you want to reject this gift of salvation that's up to you you don't have to take it but why would you re reject a gift like eternal life why would you reject paradise <laughs> today I'm asking you if you haven't already ask Jesus into your heart and life receive God's grace and the gift of life and life eternal do you receive his word today amen in these closing moments Mary would you mind coming I'm sorry I didn't ask you but I know you can find something to play but in this closing moment I want to ask you do you have that blessed assurance? A very serious moment. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Is that your story? Is that your song? Are you an heir of salvation? Purchased of God? In worship too, Pastor Dorothy is coming there and Nick's coming to... God bless you, I love you all. But they're coming to lead you in a, an invitation to pray. But for those of you here in the sanctuary and friends who are watching online, wouldn't you like to receive God's free gift of salvation? <laughs> you don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. You don't deserve it, but it's offered because God, God loves you. Wouldn't you like to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you died today, 
that heaven would be your eternal home. I want us to bow our hearts. These altars are open for you, and I invite you to come and pray and just simply say, Jesus, remember me. It doesn't really matter what the, what the words are. It's, it's the direction of your heart. And if, and if you come forward, it's, a, it's like coming towards Jesus, and he's here to receive you. He's here to welcome you. There will be no judgment because I said early, every one of us have sinned. Every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. If you want to be saved today, if you want to have that blessed assurance, will you come? I'll wait just a few moments. Before we close with our heads bowed and eyes still closed, no one looking around, I want to ask a very personal question. If you're here today, there was something in you that wanted, wanted to come forward, but you didn't for whatever reason. You don't have the assurance that your sins are forgiven or that heaven is your eternal home, but you would just like to acknowledge that and say, Pastor, I, for whatever reason, I'm not ready today, but would you put me on your prayer list? that I'll, I'll soon come to this decision to receive the grace and the gift of salvation. Anybody like that, just put your hand right up and, and right back down, and I promise you I will pray. I will pray for you. Anyone? I see that hand. God bless you. Anybody else? Praise God. Lord, your, your, your presence has been sweet today. We've been inspired by the music. We've been reminded of the gospel message that we proclaim. <laughs> thank you for salvation that's full and free. And I thank you for the way that, that Fanny Crosby captures in a poetic way our message of entire sanctification, perfect submission. Lord, when we submit our whole hearts to you, when we are perfectly submitted, then all is at rest. And so I pray for that rest to come to the souls of the people I pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this flock that you've entrusted to my care. I pray that every one of us will leave today singing that song. This is my story. This is my song. And for those who don't have that song, to those who need to rewrite their story. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will use every one of us this week to be salt and, and to be light and to draw people towards you. I pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit of God and the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. I love you.